Swing and a miss. Stuck him out. This season, the Phillies are in position to defend their crown as they sit comfortably atop the National League East. Meanwhile, the Giants have slammed their way back into the NL wildcard race. But it's been their frontline pitching that's kept San Francisco in contention. And tonight, the jewel of the Giants staff will try to toss a gem at the powerful Phillies. While Philadelphia sends out one of their reinforcements, Pedro Martinez will try to put the Kung Fu Panda and the Giants away. It's the Giants and the Phillies, Lincecum and Pedro, on MLB Network's Thursday Night Baseball Next. We are going home! Unbelievable! Makes the catch! Welcome to MLB Network's Thursday Night Baseball, driven by Chevy. A gorgeous September night in Philadelphia. 73 degrees as game time approaches. The Phillies cruising along atop the National League East as they attempt to defend their world championship. Seven and a half up on the Braves. Eight and a half in front of the Marlins. The Giants, meanwhile, with the Rockies losing this afternoon to the Mets, have an opportunity tonight to move back into a wild card tie. With Jim Cott, I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to Citizens Bank Park. This series has been all about pitching. First two games shutouts. Cole Hamels for the Phillies on Tuesday. Brad Penny, new acquisition for the Giants with some relief help on Wednesday. And tonight, Lincecum for the Giants. Pedro Martinez for the Phillies. Can't do better than that. Well, and we hope it's all about pitching tonight, this anticipated pitcher's duel. Let's start out with Pedro Martinez, who could be a big factor for the Phillies here in September. Obviously not the power, the velocity that he had in his Cy Young years. Done very well in his four starts, as you can see. And how has he done well? With a lot more movement on the pitches and an outstanding changeup. Whether he has power or not, Pedro has always been able to pitch with whatever he has. His record as a Philly is 2-0, bringing his career career victory total to 216 his career winning percentage of 686 is second only to Whitey Ford in the modern history of baseball lifetime ERA under three five ERA titles three Cy Young Awards while his opponent tonight Tim Lincecum does not have as extensive a resume at age 25 he has been spectacular well I'm looking forward to watching that he's got Giants on his uniform but he's a little guy by today's standards just 5'11 and man has he got some power and movement fastball in the mid 90s outstanding curveball and change you saw about a month ago what he did there against the Phillies as you're looking at him right now and right now maybe the best in the business so Tim Lincecum you see what he's done over the last couple of years against Pedro Martinez we know what he's done over a Hall of Fame career we return to Citizens Bank Park to check the lineups and get things started Pedro to the hill first when we come back on MLB Networks Thursday Night Baseball. The story of Tim Lincecum begins in the backyard. Dad, son, and a pitcher's mound. Dad taught him that astonishing delivery by doing things like placing a dollar bill on the ground to make sure he'd follow through. 3-2 pitch. Tim's followed through all right. And Tim Lincecum gets it done. It's no freak show. It's a story that just keeps getting better. This is beyond dedication. This is beyond baseball. This Saturday night, when the sun goes down, get dressed to the nines as MLB Network goes clubbing with the Tigers and Rays. Saturday night, Saturday night, Saturday night, we gotta do it right. It's your invitation to the biggest party in baseball. This week, a heated AL battle of postseason hopefuls in Florida as Miguel Cabrera and the Tigers take on Evan Longoria and the Rays. Tigers, Rays, Saturday, live at 7 Eastern on MLB Network. Two, one. Go. Welcome back to MLB tonight. We're following every game live. White Sox coming up with you on. Let's go inside the park to Chicago where the White Sox are putting a hurting. My goodness. Unbelievable. Pull the Philly game up. Here's Utley. He did it again. Oh. Well, here's an update from Fenway Park. Let's take a look. Run of the plate. In time. He got it. Oh, what a play. 
MLB Tonight is the show with all the action. Catch it weeknights starting at 6 Eastern on MLB Network. Thirty-seven-year-old Pedro Martinez to the mound for the Phillies. Four starts as a member of this ball club. The Phillies have won all of them. Two of them were delayed by rain, and Charlie Manuel elected not to send him back out. His ERA in those four starts is a combined 4.50. Always a treat, Bob, to uh, come to a ball game when Pedro is pitching. Uh, American League advanced scouts used to on the night he pitched. That's the way they carried their reports onto their prospective teams. Because he is so good at sizing up a hitter, pitching to his weakness, doesn't have to, their weakness, doesn't have the power anymore. But uh, I saw him in the World Baseball Classic back in March in Puerto Rico, and he even looked back then like a, he could pitch in the big leagues again. Now he's getting a chance to prove it. Here's a look at the starting lineup presented by the Bigs 2 from 2K Sports. Velez Renteria, Sandoval. Molina back in the lineup after missing eight games behind the plate. He's in the cleanup spot. Oribe three for three with a home run last night. And Lincecum on the mound with his record of 13 and four. Well, and Pedro will make his fifth start for the Phillies. You see a 2 0 record. And again, uh, outstanding changeup. Relies more on a command and pinpoint control than power that he did during his Cy Young years. Velez, the slender, switch hitting left fielder, stands in at 275. He has three home runs. Swings on the first pitch and drives it deep into right center field, way back, and a first pitch home run. Only three for the year before that swing, and the Giants are up 1 0. The Giants near the bottom. In terms of home runs in the National League, in fact, only the Mets have hit fewer. But Velez jumps on the first one, and they're up one nothing. Wow! Already against form, as you mentioned, the Giants not known for home runs, and you know Velez wasn't because he sprinted around the bases like Willie McGee used to. And Pedro look and say, "Wow, the ball carries pretty good here." <laughs> A rare home run for the Giants. And here's Edgar Renteria taking a strike. Renteria has not been terribly productive at the plate this year, but he had a huge grand slam and a recent win over Colorado. At shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. And the two-time gold lover throws him out. Well, another trend for the Giants team. You see three pitches, one out and a home run, uh, more than any other team in the National League. They'll attack the ball early in the count. You, you probably will not see them uh, take many two or three ball counts. And now Sandoval hitting 330 with 21 home runs. Foul ball strike one. And, and of course that will work in Pedro's favor. If he knows this is a free swinging team. He has the ability to change speeds early in the count, take advantage of that aggressiveness. Took a rip at one that might have been outside the strike zone. Sandoval has quickly become an extremely popular player in the Bay Area. He's been dubbed the Kung Fu Panda. And you can see a bit of a resemblance there. A ball and two strikes. That one's poked toward the left field line into the corner and it drops fair. Sandoval on his way to second as Ibanez gets it back in. And a one out double. Well, with two strikes, Sandoval pokes that out toward left field. And let's check the Phillies in the field behind Pedro Martinez. Ruiz behind the plate and Pedro Feliz at third. Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley, the double play combination. Ryan Howard at first. There's Raleigh Bunyas in left field who tracked down that Sandoval double. Shane Victorino in center. Jason Worth plays right. So now Pedro has to deal with Benji Molina in the cleanup spot. 
261 with 16 homers. Call strike. Molina back in the lineup after missing eight games. Eli Whiteside handled most of the catching during his absence. A check on Sandoval on the pitch. One and one. The plate umpire is Tony Randazzo. At first base, Brian Gorman. Chris Cuccioni at second. And the crew chief, Jerry Lane, calls the plays at third. One out, one in, one on, and one and one the count to Molina. A first pitch game opening home run from Velez, and then after Renteria grounded out, Sandoval with an opposite field double. Martinez trying to squirm out of it and minimize the damage here. And his 1 2 pitch to Molina. Got a piece of it. And also a piece of Carlos Ruiz back of the plate for the Phillies. You see the outside target and fouled right off that mask. So uh, Carlos checks to make sure it's all intact. The veteran right fielder Randy Wynn is on deck. And another 1 2 pitch coming. Up high. Yeah, pretty good pop on the fastball as you see the radar gun reading there at 91. So Pedro's picked up some uh, velocity by working out all season. Plenty of uh, velocity, good enough fastball to uh, pitch in the big leagues, obviously. Just has to be a little more precise with his control, which he's always been able to do. Still has the outstanding changeup. Breaking ball not as devastating as it once was, but still can be effective if he has command. And he struck him out with high heat. Perfect location. Up and in, toughest pitch for any to hit or catch up with. You see the disappointment by Benji Molina. So here's Randy Wynn trying to pick up Sandoval, who remains at second base with two out now. Would buy him. Indication of how the Giants have to, they don't rely on the home run as they got kind of peck and scratch, but you look mm -hmm. at their lineup and no disrespect for Molina and Wynn, but in a lot of lineups they would be hitting elsewhere other than sure. four and five. Sandoval looks like a legitimate number three hitter, but they have no true heart of the order beyond him. That'll make the seats. On top of it, they don't really steal a lot of bases, they only have 61 steals. This guy, the veteran win, leads them with 11. Yeah, it's a bad combination when you have a team doesn't hit a lot of home runs. They don't steal bases. They don't get runners in from third with less than two out very well. And they rely, obviously, on great pitching and defense. And uh, tonight they got a rare leadoff home run to get them on the board. And the 0-2 pitch. High and away. They are second in team ERA in the league behind Joe Torre's Dodgers. Last night's combined shutout by Brad Penny and Jeremy Affeld, who worked the ninth, was their 18th shutout. That's the most in the major leagues. So they are relying almost solely on their pitching. Struck him out, so Pedro records a couple of Ks, gives up a leadoff homer, strands Sandoval, who doubled at second. Half an inning in the books in Philadelphia, 1 0 Giants. 25 year old Tim Lincecum, 13 and 4 for the year, and this is the lineup he will face. Leads the National League in home runs, third overall in the major leagues behind the Yankees and the Texas Rangers, but far and away the leading home run hitting team 
in the National League. And in fact, 46% of the Phillies' runs for the year have come directly as a result of the home run, the highest percentage of any team in baseball. Let's see what Lincecum can do against them tonight. Jimmy Rollins will start. It's still under 250, but heating up of late. Nice play at second to throw him out. Well, you mentioned all those home run numbers, Bob, and they're going against a pitcher who doesn't allow a lot of home runs. Tim Lincecum, there you see the glowing numbers 13 and 4, 222 strikeouts with an earned run average uh, 2.33. And we're going to get a look uh, at one of the most unusual pitchers in baseball tonight for a guy just 5'11, a very long stride, fastball in the mid 90s, and a great overhand curveball. So a nice play by Juan Uribe to take care of Rollins leading off the Phillies first. And here's Victorino. Shane lifts one to shallow left. Velez for the second out. Well, let's check out that defense behind Lincecum. That's a Eugenio Velez who made that catch in left field also got the Giants on the board with a home run. Let's check out the infield Pablo Sandoval at third then Edgar Renteria the veteran at short as well as Juan Uribe at second. Let's check out in the outfield along with Velez it's Aaron Rowan in center and Randy Wynn over in right Travis Ishikawa is the Giants first baseman. Two quick outs in the bottom of the first, and it brings up Utley, who's at an even 300 with 29 home runs. Lincecum is pitching on an extra day's rest. Each of his last two starts featured heavy pitch counts 120, 130 in that vicinity. So they gave him an extra day, and it worked out great because Brad Penny exceeded all expectations last night with eight shutout innings. And in uh, today's uh, baseball counting pitches so carefully as you see Brad Penny in the background there won last night's game. They don't pay too much attention to Lincecum's uh, pitch count. Very loose motion very durable. And a called strike three Utley is dispatched. Strikeout number 223 for the year for Lincecum he leads the major leagues in that category. It's one nothing Giants after one. Uribe Ishikawa and Rowan the scheduled hitters against Pedro Martinez to start the second inning. Giants lead it one nothing. Breaking ball at the knees for a strike. Owen oh 2. most people realize that Pedro Martinez is a certain first ballot Hall of Famer. Some may not fully grasp how all time great how transcendently great he has been. And there are numbers and observations to back that up. Here's his 0 2 pitch. Wow struck him out and it looks like he's got some hop on that yeah. fastball tonight. That's three consecutive strikeouts great for Pedro Martinez. Great sequence Giants might be happy they got that first pitch fastball at Velez in for a home run. Because he's been lights out since then. And here's a, another look at that. You see Ruiz target wants it inside and up, and that's where he got it. Just like he struck out Molina with that good high fastball. Here is Travis Ishikawa, who may not have left his heart in San Francisco, but apparently left his bat there. He's hitting 340 at home and 161 on the road. Seven of his nine home runs have come by the bay. And he has just about the same number of at bats away from home as at San Francisco so there's something about playing at home that works for him and uh, not really known as a hitters ballpark where the uh, Giants play here's Pedro's 2 0 pitch swing and a miss lots of ways to express this. But through his first 12 seasons, which is the length of Sandy Koufax's entire big league career, Pedro Martinez had one more win than Sandy, 166 to 165, but 20 fewer defeats, 67 to 87. They each won five ERA titles in that 12 year span, and each won three Cy Young Awards. Now it's a different era, 
different expectations for pitchers in terms of innings and complete games. High fly ball into right center field. Victorino calls and takes it. Boy, we could have a lot of fun with this, Bob, when you see the graphic, because uh, we could spend the next uh, eight innings just talking about the. Well, there it is. The the differences in, in who is better, who's more effective. You look at the comparable numbers that you referred to. Of course, Pedro pitched most of his career in the American League, where he had to face DHs. He pitched a lot in the American League East, where you have deep lineups. A strike to Aaron Rowan, and with all due respect. And a world of respect is due to Sandy Koufax, one of the greatest and most elegant pitchers ever. His era was a pitcher's era. No question. Where lots of guys, guys who'll never make the Hall of Fame, had ERAs under three. Of course, Sandy and the other great ones were sometimes beneath two. Whereas Pedro pitched in a distorted, almost insane hitter's era. Couldn't agree with you more. It is more difficult to pitch today and has been for the last 10, 12 years with a small strike zone, smaller ballparks, light bats. But again, Koufax, to his credit, pitched a lot more innings, a lot more complete games, and most of the time he had to win his games two to one or one to nothing. Count levels at two and two. And something else that Koufax did. He took the ball in the World Series and pitched complete games right. twice the clinching game to complete the sweep against the Yankees in 63 and to beat you and the Twins in game seven on two days rest in 65 and those kind of images stay in the minds of baseball historians and the average fan. The 1965 World Series that's how the game has changed is the last World Series played where every win was a complete game win two of those by Koufax. Called strike three. Two strikeouts in each of the first two frames for Pedro Martinez. The Giants lead it on the Velez home run, one nothing. We go to the bottom of the second in Philly. Tim Lincecum working on an extra day's rest because of an especially high pitch count in each of his last two starts. Threw only six pitches in a one, two, three first, and now faces the cleanup man, Ryan Howard, as we move to the Philly second. Starts him with a strike. Howard typically heating up in the season's second half. That has always been his pattern. 37 home runs already with 112 RBIs. Over the last three years, he's had 58, 47, and 48 home runs. And Sikum gets ahead of him 0 2. With Howard in an 0 2 hole, we might as well note that each of the last two seasons he has fanned exactly 199 times, and this year he's at 159 already, and now make it 160. They'll have to throw him out, and they do. Second strikeout for Lincecum. It is often an all or nothing deal for Ryan Howard. Thursday Night Baseball is driven by Chevy and American Revolution and sponsored by Thompson's Water Seal. The most powerful protection against water damage guaranteed an Axe Skin Contact Shower Gel for skin that's irresistible to touch. A ball to Jason Worth. Bob, you mentioned the Howard strikeout total, and there again is another downside to the Phillies this year. Uh, Charlie. Manuel says we either hit home runs or not much at all and Lincecum difficult to take out of the ballpark. He's one of the best in the business at not allowing home runs. You look at this kid he not only has talent and craftsmanship already mature beyond his years. He has presence. If you walked into the ballpark knew nothing about Lincecum and were just a casual baseball fan the first thing you would say. Who is that? Right. <laughs> I agree with you. I was at the uh, New York Writers dinner with all the like Cliff Lee and Pujols and all the star players and I said I looked at Tim I thought it was a guitar. But he loves his hair. Bruce Bochy his manager doesn't care too much for it, but he loves it. And the Giants love his control like that. 
He's got a very unusual motion that will get a chance to break down and that and that's what makes him effective as well as the power stuff difficult to pick the ball up very deceptive works quickly which I know you like and this is going to tie the game Jason Worth got all of that. Number 30 for Worth. And when he touches the dish, it's a 1 1 game. Well, this inning sums it up for yeah. the Phillies. Strikeout, solo home run. And already a reversal of form. The Giants hit one, Lincecum gives up one. Both unusual. Called strike to Ibanez. The Phillies rookie general manager Ruben Amaro Jr. who inherited a world championship team from a truly great baseball man Pat Gillick would put it together. But Ruben Amaro Jr. has been on a roll himself one and two the count to Ibanez. He acquires Ibanez as a free agent. They let the popular Pat Burrell go. And then more recently the acquisition of Cliff Lee along with Ben Francisco but Lee was the key guy from the Indians for four prospects none of whom were rated as the top prospects in the Philly system. Check out the pitch and it looked like a change up that hung about belt high. Either that or a hanging curve some type of breaking pitch above the belt and uh, Jason Worth took advantage of it. And down goes Ibanez. As good as he was early in the year an all star he's been uh, the downside of that in the second half again adding to the Phillies hitting problems. Good high fastball that he got Ibanez to chase and couldn't catch up with. Here's the third baseman Pedro Feliz. Both of these pitchers are great examples for anybody watching no matter what kind of stuff you have of working fast and throwing strikes. Hit hard and backhanded by Renteria. That takes care of Feliz the solo homer by Worth evens the issue at one after two in Philly. To the top of the third. Martinez back atop the hill and Lincecum stands in. A career 158 hitter. Has eight base hits this season one of them a double. And after watching that swing you say to yourself where did the eight hits come from. <laughs> How is that possible. You know that being said the other thing that I marvel at is when we show you the comparative records with Pedro and Koufax how did these guys lose 80 games or 60 <laughs> games I mean the times I have had a chance to watch Pedro and then in person Sandy Koufax it's like how do they ever lose. And how would Lincecum ever make contact against Pedro on 100 <laughs> at bats that's the fifth strikeout for Martinez. All right let's get back to. The issue of Koufax and Martinez and here's a big difference the total number of innings pitched and the complete games and of course Sandy had many more shutouts because to qualify for one you got to go the full nine not just pitch shutout ball until they take you out and Koufax had four no hitters one of them a perfect game and he was a sterling World Series performer. But still the point is that Martinez compares favorably it's yep. not a crazy comparison. No. What Sandy compressed his greatness into about a five year period of time. Yeah. And I think one of the one of the unbelievable years that he had. As Pedro pours in another strike as he actually one year struck out 300 more than he walked. He struck mm -hmm. out like 385 and walked 82. Great strikeout to walk ratio as Pedro does. And One and two to Velez who started the game with a home run. Here is the comparison the best five years of their respective careers and here Sandy gets a significant yeah. edge. Yeah you look at uh, 63 through 60 62 through 66 
be pretty hard to duplicate those years. And had to retire at the age of 30 because of the arthritic elbow. And who knows, with modern training and medical techniques available, perhaps Sandy could have continued oh, for no several question. more years had he pitched in Pedro's era. When the arthroscopic surgery, look at the complete games, 100 versus 18. The arthroscopic uh, surgery. But what about Pedro tonight? Oh. That is his sixth strikeout. Bad on a changeup. It, it's kind of like, and a lot of great pitchers, you get them earlier, you don't get them. With the leadoff home run, and then since then, it's been nothing. Again, the uh, comparative record 100 complete games for Koufax, 18 for Pedro. And that's not a knock on Pedro, it's just the way the game was played differently. More uh, reliance on the bullpen right now. And in those days, when Sandy got the ball, it was you go nine and make two runs hold up. And most of the time, he did. Renteria grounded a short his first time up. Martinez yielded a homer and a double. Two of the first three hitters he faced. Since then he has fanned six of the next seven. And I have not seen him throw this hard. I'm not sure what the gun shows on each pitch. We'll start to keep track of it. I haven't seen him throw this hard in quite a while. Well, I, as I mentioned, saw him in the World Baseball Classic where the control looked good. He's pitching against the Netherlands team, mostly double-A hitters, but certainly not with this kind of velocity. And Taria takes a strike, three and one. Full count. That one was at 90. Well, this is a rare at bat for the Giants to look at a full count. Renteria with a good moving fastball, taking it for strike on the outside part of the plate. He struck out the side, and he has fanned seven of the last eight hitters he has faced. Let's check in with Hazel May. Reigning National League Cy Young Award winner Tim Lincecum. Pedro Martinez, who's won it three times during his illustrious career, hooking up tonight in Philadelphia. Carlos Ruiz, the catcher. And the 0-2 pitch. They checked down at first base, and he didn't go around. A ball and two strikes. When you look at Lincecum's elaborate motion and his slender frame, do you worry at all that he can't sustain the mechanics or that eventually it will lead to some kind of arm trouble? Got the inside corner, and that punches him out. The fourth strikeout for Lincecum. That went on a changeup. And we'll look at that motion that Bob is talking about. I don't know if they're certainly with a guy that is 5'11", like Pedro. You wonder about their durability. He's not a particularly, you know, he's not six feet, 200 plus pounds. But I don't know that there's any way you can predict when a pitcher is going to hurt his arm or not hurt his arm. He's so loose and flexible and with such a fluid motion that I, I, I couldn't find any reason to say that he's going to break down. There's nothing herky jerky or pitching mm -hmm. across his body that you see with a lot of pitchers. Martinez a lifetime 101 hitter one for six as a Philly. Well, this is so much fun to watch. I, I had the privilege of watching as a player Steve Carlton pitch a lot of great games in this city, not in this ballpark. And his philosophy was play catch with the catcher, with that time was Tim McCarver, and completely oblivious of who the hitter is. And that's what both of these pitchers remind me of. They don't care who's hitting. You could run Willie Mays in there, and they're just going to play catch with the catcher, throw what they've got, hit the target, and take take whatever results they get. 
the 2 2 pitch to Pedro. Got him swinging for his fifth strikeout. Well, we compared Martinez to Koufax. Let's compare him to Tim Lincecum, who has had 84 career starts and at this point has put up better numbers than Pedro at a similar point, point in his career. But of course, Pedro really turned it on after that, and his subsequent performances were better. In fact, his career ERA has moved beneath three when once it was closer to four. Now, let's become one of those rare pitchers that's won a Cy Young Award in his first full season, like Brett Saberhagen did. Here's a shot to deep center field, and it is over the head of Aaron Rowan. Here's Rollins into second base, and he'll hold there. With two out, he doesn't try for three. Maybe with one out, he takes a chance on trying to stretch it into a triple. Well, Aaron Rowan, usually one of the better center fielders at uh, tracking down fly balls, but he took a bad route on this one. I don't know if he got fooled by the flight of the ball. See how he has to almost run a post pattern like a wide receiver. He ran over and then had to run back. Misjudged that, couldn't catch up with it with Rollins' speed, an easy double. So here's Victorino, who flied the left his first time up. Aaron, a called strike. Aaron Rowan, like a former Philly, Gary Maddox, who both played center field for the uh, Giants and the Phillies, but uh, Gary with those great routes, always got a great jump on the ball, ran directly to where it was going to be, and uh, Rowan didn't do it that time. Victorino rolls one to Uribe, and Lincecum is out of the third. It remains a 1-1 game at Citizens Bank Ballpark in Philadelphia. Lincecum hooking up with Martinez. As Pablo Sandoval prepares to lead off in the fourth inning, here are the State Farm home run leaders for the Giants. And it's Sandoval and Molina. They have three in double figures. Rowan the third. And Ishikawa and Uribe inching closer. Right back at Pedro, he knocks it down and throws Sandoval out. But at least he made contact. Seven of the previous eight giant hitters had not. Yeah, they can uh, play the last six innings with the same ball, the way these two guys are pitching. Never have to throw it out of play. They're, nobody's hitting it out of the uh, infield. As Bob mentioned, rare contact there by a Giants hitter. And G. Molina struck out his first time up. That one floats in there for a strike. You know, you look at the depth the Phillies have now, especially with the addition of Cliff Lee. And you say there's no place for Pedro in the postseason rotation. But if he keeps throwing the way he has through three innings plus tonight, maybe you have to reconsider that judgment. No question. A bouncer to short. Rollins charges. And has plenty of time to get Molina. Ten in a row retired by Pedro Martinez since the Sandoval double in the first. Here's a look at the Phillies rotation. Cliff Lee has been just fantastic since he came over from Cleveland. Blanton is a guy who figures to be there. Hamels threw a one nothing shutout a two hitter on Tuesday. The MVP of the NLCS and the World Series in 08. Jay Happ, very effective. There's Pedro. We haven't even mentioned Jamie Moyer, who has had his moments at age 46. So Charlie Manuel will have some options come October. And, and what he can do when you looked at those five pitchers and then adding Jamie Moyer, you have lefties and righties. And if the Phillies were to have to play the St. Louis Thursday veteran Jamie Moyer down in the uh, Phillies bullpen. If they were to happen to, if they hooked up with the Cardinals, most of the Cardinal powers from the right side of the plate. That means that Blanton and Pedro would be more of effective, though Hamels and Lee with their changeups and so forth could still do well against right hand hitting lineups, but not as well as Pedro. 
when you think about using a guy like Jamie Moyer in relief you say well he could be effective against selected left handed hitters it's not so simple at age 46 he doesn't just pop up in the bullpen throw 10 or 12 pitches and say I'm ready to go it doesn't work that way here's Rollins backhanding on the run and getting win by a step a one two three fourth for Pedro Martinez who has set down 11 in a row. Utley Howard and Worth in the Philadelphia fourth against Tim Lincecum. Lincecum was 10 and 2 at the All Star break. 3 and 2 since, but his ERA is identical in the second half to what it was in the first half. This has had a lot of no decisions, and the Giants generally don't score a whole lot of runs. Lincecum was the starter for the National League in the All Star game in St. Louis. Fitting honor for the reigning Cy Young Award winner. 2-0 to Utley who fanned in the first. With five strikeouts already tonight, Lincecum has 227, which leads the major leagues. And if he continues at his present pace, he could set a single season franchise record. San Francisco and New York combined for the Giants. The record belongs to Christy Mathewson, who struck out 267 106 years ago yeah, in 1903. And probably in 400 innings. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why well, these guys go to a three ball count, you think they're losing it <laughs> because they're both so effective and economical. And yet, with Utley up there, 3 0 count, he doesn't just groove a fastball, he throws him a breaking ball. And now the count runs out full. You think about the long history of the Giants. Carl Hubble, Juan Marichal, Christy Mathewson. This kid might top them all in terms of most strikeouts in a single season by October 1st. You mentioned the strikeout total in the Cy Young Award uh, given every year for pitching excellence. Lincecum the winner last year and yet Cy Young in his career averaged about three strikeouts an inning because when you see those totals what, they not three so, an inning no three, three a game. game I'm sorry three game they wow three so an inning yeah. they just they should have named yeah. the award after him they that pitched, guy was terrific they pitched so many more innings than pitchers today do but their average per inning not as good and all of these things have to be considered with an understanding of the changes from era to era guys simply strike out more today it used to be an embarrassment to fan a hundred times in a season now you can't keep track of the guys who do that and some approach 200. We're talking about hitters, not pitchers. And he puts another one in the book as Utley goes down for the second time tonight. Six for Lincecum. Great sequence. Came back from a 3 0 count through a 3 1 changeup. Then after a foul ball strikes Utley out with a changeup. Uh, another thing both of these pitchers have going for them that the hitters know they have at least three and maybe four pitches that they can throw over. In any count. Ryan Howard, a strikeout victim in the second for the 160th time this year to go with his 37 home runs. The infield has shifted. Three on the right side. The entire third base side wide open. You barely notice where any of the fielders are playing because all the focus is on both of these pitchers as it should be. Wow. Sandoval the third baseman. Is at the shortstop's position and actually pinch towards second base. Look at all that space between Sandoval and the third base bag. 
goodbye to Ryan Howard and when you throw it around the horn in this case you have to throw it towards second base. And another changeup in his last start Lincecum struck out seven all on curves and changeups he sets that up with his fastball. Well here's what the heart of the Philly order has done so far tonight. They've had five total at bats. Utley and Howard have struck out four times between them. But Jason Worth has homered. And here he is. Crushed a 3 2 pitch deep into the left field seats back in the second. Let's take a look at the State Farm home run leaders for the Phillies. Worth's homer tonight got him to 30. Utley and Abanez aren't far behind. And Jimmy Rollins, who packs a punch for a little guy, will in all likelihood exceed 20 for the year. A chopper toward the middle to his left, Renteria. Takes care of Worth. And four innings have gone by in Philadelphia with the score still knotted at one. And we check in once again with Hazel May. MLB Network Saturday Night Baseball, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Tigers and the Rays then at 10. You can get caught up on every game across the majors on MLB tonight. All of baseball all night long Saturday night on MLB Network. There's a certain symmetry through the first four innings. Each pitcher has given up one run on two hits. Each has allowed a home run and a double. Each has struck out seven. Neither has walked a man. This one is lofted toward the right field line. Into the corner and into foul ground to make the catch goes Jason Worth just across the chalk to retire Uribe. Oh, we've talked about the Kofax. Pedro Martinez comparisons. Maybe we're really looking at Colfax and Marischal. That's what a duel like this would remind you of. Right, Marischal, the great right-hander for the Giants. Here's what Bob is talking about with Worth. Thinks he has it measured right there. It gives you a little idea what the wind currents are doing. Because at the last minute, it drifts well into foul territory. A ball to Travis Ishikawa, the Giants first baseman who flied to center his first time up. I haven't checked outside around the parking lots, but I think both these guys are double parked. <laughs> They're in a hurry to get it done. We played less than an hour and we're in the top of the fifth. Popped back of second. Utley. Two gone on the Giants fifth. Yeah, working the count is not in either of these lineups repertoire right now. And, I, and I, on one hand, you can't blame them because the last thing you want to do is let either of these pitchers get ahead in the count. As a result, it works so much in their favor that hitters will swing earlier, get outs quicker, keep the pitch count down. You can take your team deeper into the game. Two out, nobody aboard for Aaron Rowan, who had a homer last night against his former teammates. He and Uribe went back to back in the giant victory. A liner to left that falls in front of Ibanez for a two out single. That snaps a string of 13 consecutive giants retired by Pedro Martinez. The numbers were virtually equal until that base hit from Rowan. Made it three hits for the Giants to the Phillies two. And here's Lincecum who struck out in the third. With swings like that. Is it a good idea. When your right arm is as prized as Lincecum's and when you're such a poor hitter anyway to bat left handed. I don't know there's a lot said about that Sandy Koufax is a right hand hitter so he had his left arm exposed to the pitcher. Was that a good idea. <laughs> I don't think it shortened his career. Yeah, that wasn't what did it. <laughs> he does have a guard on his pitching elbow. Oh. 
takes a crackling fastball for strike two. Most of you know that the HK on the Phillies uniform is in honor of their longtime voice Harry Callis who passed away at the beginning of this season. And is sorely missed in these parts and throughout baseball not only for his skill as a broadcaster. Outfield wall also reflects their affection for HK not a, not only for his skill as a broadcaster but his presence. Oh, no question. Well, Lincecum gets a piece of it. I had the thrill of playing here for several years and becoming good friends with, as we called him, Harry the Key. I think they still play his home run call when Phillies hit home runs. And uh, hang his blazer in the yeah. White belt, white shoes, white pants, including after Labor Day. Was not a slave to fashion, but did have a style of his own. Rowan to short lead at first and the 2 2 to Lincecum. Pedro puts him away for his eighth strikeout. Four and a half gone by. Still a 1 1 game. As Raul Ibanez leads off the Philly fifth, tonight's Pepsi Music playlist of at bat songs includes the following. Apparently, we did not have the songs queued. Oh, there they are. All personal favorites of Jim Cott and yeah. all among the songs that Ibanez has selected to uh, herald his at bats. You know, when I saw Soldier Boy, I got excited. I thought for a moment it was Soldier Boy by the Shirelles, yeah. but that shows the generation <laughs> gap we're dealing with here. Well if pitchers tonight could have their own playlist Linsen come and Pedro would have Linster, Linda Ronstadt if they blew by you. Oh nice. Although originally a Roy Orbison. Song. Ah OK. Covered ably by Linda Ronstadt two and one the count to Ibanez. On the corner, two and two. Every fastball Lincecum throws is a two seam fastball. You've heard in today's era, if you follow baseball, pitchers will throw a two seam or a four seam, or the two seam gives you more movement. And Ibanez with a weak wave at it, they've got to throw to first to complete it. And when we talk about Lincecum and Pedro, they're not Tom Seaver with the powerful leg drive. They're 5'11", slightly built, not a lot of leg drive. So how do they generate the power? Check up the up of the upper body and the violent motion, the arm speed, the body speed. Pedro and Lincecum both, they get everything into every delivery. They have to. Tremendous propulsion off the rubber. And with that strikeout of Ibanez, Lincecum matches Pedro on the night with eight. Get back to the two seam four seam a lot of times a pitcher will have a four seam fastball just for here it is I can throw it for a strike like to a pitcher doesn't have a lot of movement but Lincecum says that grip does not feel comfortable in his hand he never uses it. In on his fist rolled back of the bag Sandoval across the diamond to get Feliz. In on the handle and Sandoval who plays behind the plate as well as third base nice backhand stab and a strong throw across the diamond. And it gets Feliz by a stride. We were talking earlier about the depth of starting pitching the Phillies would take into the postseason. You think about the Giants. They are not as good a team overall. This is assuming for the sake of argument that they beat the Rockies out. For the wild card, or that the Braves or Marlins don't make a surge and steal it away at the last minute. If the Giants are in the postseason, they are not as good a team overall as the other three likely to make it. But with their pitching, especially in the first round best of five, if they come at you with Lincecum and Kane and Zito, who has found himself, his ERA is under two in the season's second half, if they get anything like what they got last night from Brad Penny, look out in a short series. Yeah the, the general feeling when you talk to baseball people and people in the National League the Rockies maybe have a better team 
more powerful team but the Giants are scary in a short series because of the pitchers you mentioned. The potential participants this October are all extremely interesting and appealing. Torrey's Dodgers LaRusso's Cardinals who look tremendous lately and are something like 30 and 2 or 30 and 4 in games started by their front three. Over the last few months, there's a rarity to walk Ruiz with two out, which he didn't want to do, obviously, because he could have saved Pedro to lead off the exactly. sixth. You think of the way the Cardinals are playing now and the protection that Matt Holliday has provided behind Albert Pujols. You look at the Phillies, the defending world champions, the Giants, if they should make it with their pitching. Over in the American League, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Angels, who are always an aggressive and an exciting team, and the Tigers, who have their flaws but have three very strong starting pitchers in Verlander, Jackson, and Bonderman. Could have some great pitching matchups uh, in October. And unfortunately, tonight might be an exception, but it still usually comes down to who gets the big outs in the eighth and ninth out of the bullpen. Very few complete games. Fouled off by Pedro. And when you consider the Phillies, with the addition of Ibanez and now Lee, they are in many respects a better team than last year's world champions. With one difference. Last year, Brad Lidge was perfect. 41 for 41 on save opportunities in the regular season, 7 for 7 in the playoffs and World Series. This year, he has blown nine saves, the most in the majors. Bounce toward the middle. Picked up by Renteria, who steps on the bag ahead of the sliding Ruiz to finish the Philadelphia fifth. It's still 1 1. Lincecum hooked up in a duel with Pedro. MLB Network's Thursday Night Baseball, driven by Chevy. Bob Costas with Jim Codd at Citizens Bank Ballpark in Philadelphia. And this could be a watershed performance for Pedro Martinez. They felt that when they picked him up, that they were adding something for the back of the rotation a guy who could give them five decent innings more often than not use his knowledge of pitching be crafty and that's what he did basically in his first few assignments for them but not tonight tonight he has been overpowering now we want to emphasize the Giants are not the most powerful lineup in the National League far from it but still Pedro's stuff has been crackling tonight and his control has been pinpoint. Here's the one exception and Velez does it again. A bid for another extra base hit and it's off the top of the wall nearly his second homer and he is in with a leadoff double. So he has solved Pedro Martinez the lone giant hitter who can make that statement. And he's only seen a handful of pitches. Homer down the first one he saw got a change up on the first pitch of the count and gets a little fastball there and turns on it and just missed hitting his second home run of the game. Victorino plays it quickly off the scoreboard and holds him to a double. Velez looks like he might weigh 175 soaking wet, but he got every ounce of it into both the home run and that two base hit. Renteria bounces to Rollins, doesn't advance the runner, one shortstop throws out the other. Boy, and this is you talk about a non-productive at bat, and you can see Renteria with his hands on his hips. With these two pitchers pitching the way they are, in that situation, Renteria knows he had to hit the ball the other way. You at least have to get Velez or try to get Velez to third base. And uh, Bruce Bochy was saying we have to do things like that. We don't hit a lot of home runs. We got to scratch and advance runners. So there's an example of a, a non-productive at bat at bat that could be a big one in tonight's game. You could make a case that Bochy could have called for a sacrifice there. Forget about trying to hit one the opposite way. Lay one down. Well, I, I think you trust the fact that Renteria, being a veteran player, would know that that's what he had to try to do. Throw in behind Velez, who dives back. Yeah, and the uh, the Giants do not steal a lot of bases, but again, this is a situation after Renteria didn't advance it, and we saw the speed Velez has gets back in time on this well-executed pickoff move. 
That it would be an opportunity to try to steal third base. Owen one to Sandoval, who has doubled and grounded out. Came into the game hitting 330. Talk about a contrast in body types at the plate the Kung Fu Panda on the bases Velez earlier I said he might weigh 175 they list him at 6 1 and 162 Roadrunner look like a one iron Pedro's 0 2 pitch. Ruiz moved outside to see if they could get Sandoval to chase one, but he wouldn't bite. Boy, he's got room to get a much bigger lead than he's getting at second base. With Utley out in the outfield grass and uh, Rollins playing pretty normal depth, but uh, Velez could get a couple of extra steps if he has any thoughts of trying to steal third. Nice block. Little things like that, too, in games like this. Uh, they don't show up in the box score, but a great block by Ruiz. Off speed pitch, and again, Carlos gets the glove down between the thighs, makes sure it doesn't go through the wickets. With Molina on deck, the 2 2 pitch to Sandoval. And a slow roller foul. We mentioned that Sandoval is known affectionately as the Kung Fu Panda. Let's take a look. You judge for yourself whether the resemblance is strong enough. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I'll buy it. <laughs> Remember the Giants used to have a left-handed pitcher about a decade or so ago named Kirk Reeder. Mm -hmm. And his nickname was Woody because his teammates thought he looked so much like Woody from Toy Story. Velez away from second. And another 2 2 pitch. Here's Utley. Velez moves to third with two out as Sandoval is retired. So Velez 90 feet away and Benji Molina trying to pick him up. He has struck out and grounded to short. As well as Martinez is pitching you wonder how long they'll let him go. Well when I see guys like this pitch I, if I'm a pitching coach I took those pitch counters and throw them away. That was his 75th pitch so certainly they could send him back out for the seventh assuming he gets through the sixth without incident. Rich Doobie the pitching coach looking on. Well the hitters will let you know and also probably is control and Charlie Manuel Rich Doobie from the sidelines they see the ball beginning to get up in the strike zone with not as much on it. That's their first indicator that. Uh, you know, Pedro has not pitched that much this season that he might be losing a bit. One one pitch is hammered to center. Victorino turns, has it lined up, and makes the catch. Molina hit it on the button. 
But Victorino tracks it down and it remains a 1-1 tie as we move to the bottom of the sixth. This will catch up on what's happened so far, and mostly it's been Martinez and Lincecum, although on the game's first pitch, Velez took Martinez out. And Jason Wirth eventually returned the favor. Here it is against Lincecum. Apart from that, each of the pitchers has struck out eight. Lincecum has walked only one. Pedro hasn't walked anybody. Top of the order in the bottom of the sixth. Jimmy Rollins to start it. Doubled his last time up. Grounded a second prior to that. The Mets beat the Rockies this afternoon, 8-3. So if the Giants can beat the Phillies tonight, they move back into a wild card tie. Colorado and San Francisco have three games remaining head-to-head -head a couple of weeks down the road in San Francisco. This one's hit deep to right center field by Rollins. Back near the fence and taken on the run by Aaron Rowand against the barrier. Right in front of the 398 sign. And again, it gives you an idea of the wind currents because Aaron Rowan did not take a normal route on that ball as Victorino didn't and worth earlier in the game. Watch it while you see the tail end of the catch. But right there, he's got a drift. Almost he catches it back over his right shoulder. So the wind, though not strong, appears to be swirling a bit down on the field. Because it started out more toward right center and then the wind took it back toward center field. Sounded like a broken bat. Ishikawa picks it up and goes to the bag himself to retire Victorina. Boys and Girls Clubs of America is the official charity of Major League Baseball, reaching more than 4 million kids worldwide, and together they create a positive place for kids. Citizens Bank Park, a positive place if you like baseball and good pitching tonight. Well, it's, uh, it's not often that these hyped-up pitchers duels turn out to be what they're advertised but tonight's uh, exceeded that with the way these two guys have dominated the game. Utley has struck out twice. Dropping his batting average beneath 300 at least for the moment. This will be Lincecum's 75th pitch upcoming. Oh, and it hit him. Obviously unintentional. No message being sent there. But the Philly fans boo just because that's what you're expected to do. Yeah, they ought to cheer. They got a base runner. Yeah. <laughs> one of the few ways, uh, Utley, though it might be painful, they uh, said, I'll take one for the team. You saw Molina's target, and that's one of the few pitches that... Uh, got away from Lincecum tonight and Lincecum's reaction lets you know that he had absolutely no intention of coming that far inside that's the 19th time Utley has been hit by a pitch this year Howard has struck out twice but you never know when his next swing could turn a game around Since he became a Phillies regular a few seasons ago, he leads the major leagues in home runs and RBIs combined. And he hammers this one toward the gap in right center field. And it will split the outfielders, go to the wall. Utley is being waved home. The Phillies are going to take the lead on a two-out double by Ryan Howard. Wow, just a little lapse of control by Tim Lincecum. He hits Utley, and you saw Molina's target. They wanted that in on the hands. Left it out over the plate where Howard could drive it into right center field. I think Utley would have scored anyway, but you could see Rowan right there failed to pick up the ball cleanly. 
And uh, two mistakes by Tim Lincecum in this inning could be the ball game. The way these guys are pitching. Jason Worth takes high. He's homered and grounded out. If I'm not mistaken, right behind the plate, and you can see it when we get the shot from the center field camera, a little wider shot, that looks like Gene Michael back of the plate. From the Yankees front office. Blue shirt. White hair. Looking at both these teams. There's the possibility that either could be the Yankees opponent. No. You see I speculate. But then when the shot becomes tighter. That is not Gene Michael. And wherever Gene Michael is tonight. Apparently it's not. Citizens Bank ballpark. Well it is that time of year yeah. you'll see scouts from the American League teams watching games like this with both these teams uh, from a distance a nice sure. mane of white hair. Yeah the stick would appreciate that. Yeah. I guess. Where was I the 2 2 pitch. And down goes Worth the ninth strikeout for Lincecum but. The Phillies grab the lead. Utley is hit by a pitch. Howard's double brings him home. Randy Wynn leads it off in the top of the seventh against Martinez. The little things that sometimes can be the difference in a close well pitched game. Chase Utley leads the major leagues and most times being hit by a pitch. When he was plunked by Lincecum in the last half inning that was the 19th time he'd been hit this year. And that one skips inside and almost gets a piece, a piece of Randy Wynn. So here it is. Two outs. Nobody on. Utley stands close to the plate. And as the guys have pointed out on diamond demos and on baseball tonight. Even when the pitch is tight. He just kind of turns away but he doesn't really move away. Line drive is caught by the man in question. Utley at second base didn't have to move much there either. So he lets it hit him. He stands on top of the plate. So now he's aboard and then Howard brings him home with a ringing double which is the proper way to do that as a hitter. That's sometimes I remember Jeff Bagwell and more recently Derek Jeter have had a lot of hand injuries getting hit on the wrist because they move their hands into that zone whereas Utley just turns his shoulder takes it in the back of the shoulder. So Martinez has the slimmest of margins to work with and a rebate pokes one into center field and it gets by Victorino goes all the way to the 409 sign and a rebate is at second base and he'll stop there with a one out double. Well let's see where the pitch was Ruiz wanted it uh, a little more inside you can see in this inning both pitchers missing their targets by the slightest of margins and the hitters taking advantage of it. The uh, interesting situation here for Bruce Bochy the Giants manager. And now they do get someone up in the uh, bullpen because suddenly with there's not been a lot of activity but you can foresee Lincecum who is due up in uh, two more hitters to be in a position where they have to pinch hit for him. That's Sergio Romo the right hander who has just begun to throw in the San Francisco pen. Ishikawa over two. The Giants with five hits now off Martinez. Phillies with just three against Lincecum but it's the Phils who have the lead at two to one. Aaron Rowan is on deck.
And you know, the more I look at that guy behind home plate, the less he looks like Gene Michael. <laughs> But he is enjoying his bag of peanuts. Ishikawa becomes the ninth strikeout victim for Martinez tonight. Good movement on the fastball tailing out away from Ishikawa. Rowan, the number eight hitter, first base open. Doubt they're going to pitch around him, of course, but uh, Bruce Bochy does have a pinch hitter in the on deck circle should Rowan reach base. Sure, Holtz, and that would mean Lincecum's night would be over. Now, I realize that runs are tough to come by, but Lincecum has thrown only 80 pitches. What do you think? As far as letting him hit, yeah. Well, I think if Rowan gets on, he's uh, sure Holtz is obviously going to be the hitter. Well, oh, what if he gets a single to tie the game, and it's a moot point because he rolls to Rollins, and that finishes the seventh inning. You know, if he got a base hit to tie the game, and he's at first base with two out, in that case, I'd let Lindsay come hit. I think. Let's go back to the studio for an MLB Authentic Collection Diamond Demo with Harold Reynolds. Okay, guys, we're witnessing a great pitching duel, but what I like as an infielder, they're hitting their spots. When that happens, check out this tape. It allows the infielders to be in position almost on every ball hit. You can anticipate that the guy's going to hit the ball where it's thrown, and now I can cheat and put myself in the right position. Right here, you can see Jimmy Rollins doing the same thing as Renteria has been able to do. The question is, how do you do that? Let's say, for example, you know the ball is going to be thrown over there the next pitch. He's throwing, he's hitting his spots. I just go like this, act like I'm cleaning up the dirt, and I've already moved myself two more feet to get myself in position. Now the ball's hit, I'm in front of it, I field it, I make the throw across the diamond. That's how it's done. Great game we're witnessing right now. Fans settled back into their seats after taking their stretch to the bottom of the seventh with Ibanez to start it. He struck out twice. And this will obviously be Lincecum's last inning since he is scheduled to lead off the eighth. So he'll try and keep it close. Tough decision Charlie Manuel has to make. And the uh, Phillies pen is active. Is how long are you going to go with Pedro? Hasn't had a complete game in four years, but the way he's pitching tonight, pretty tough to take him out. That makes it official at first base. The ninth strikeout, make it the tenth for Lincecum. And the third time that he's gotten Ibanez. Looks like another changeup, and most of Lincecum's strikeouts have been on changeups or curveballs. Gets a hit with the fastball, polishes him off with the other stuff. Pedro Feliz swings on the first one, pops it into shallow left. Renteria back from shortstop to make the catch for the second out. Pepsi, the official soft drink of Major League Baseball, presents this month's nominees for the MLB Clutch Performer of the Month award. That would be the month of August. Vote for the MLB Clutch Performer of the Month today at PepsiClutch.com. And the nominees just keep on coming. Ruiz has struck out and walked. And rips one over the leaping Sandoval and into the corner. 
On his way to second with a two-out double. So that's the Phillies' fourth hit. Yeah, and a big hit for a couple of reasons. It makes Charlie Manuel's decision easy. Yeah, because here comes Matt Stairs. Pedro Martinez with seven very, very impressive innings. And you see another high pitch. A couple pitches in the last two innings have just gotten away from Lincecum a bit. And in a game like this, that's a major difference. That one, middle of the strike zone, and Ruiz lines it down the left field line. Dave Rigetti out for a little discussion with Lincecum and uh, how to go at Matt Stairs. And Matt Stairs must be wondering how to solve anybody, let alone Lincecum. He's one of the game's premier pinch hitters, even at age 41. He has four pinch hit home runs this year, bringing his career total to 18. But he is 0 for his last 27. So we're at the tail end of what was a, an exceptional pitcher's duel. Martinez is done. Lincecum will be at some point either knocked out in this inning or finished once he concludes it because they'll hit for him in the eighth. Looks like the message from Dave Rigetti is that uh, Matt Steer is going to be sitting on a fastball all the way. The first two pitches change ups both missed. Not cheated on the cut. And Stairs, despite the current slump, can still turn on a good fastball even at age 41. Good old fashioned pinch hitter. He knows he's going to get three chances and he's going to have three aggressive swings. Down and away, three and one. Stairs, the very definition of a well traveled veteran. The Phillies are his 11th big league team. Ruiz at second with two down. And the count runs out full. Right at the knees. You see Benji Molina wanted it outside. It did catch the inside corner. And he gets him swinging. 11 strikeouts for Lincecum. And Martinez looks on with an expression that shows his appreciation. He's done his job. He's on the right side for the moment of a 2 1 score. As Ryan Matson gets loose in celebration of Roberto Clemente Day, Major League Baseball recognizes players who go beyond. MLB congratulates and thanks Cole Hamels and Barry Zito for their outstanding dedication to community service. To learn how you can get involved, visit MLB Go Beyond. Com. So Madsen out of the Philly bullpen and Nate Sheerholtz off the giant bench to bat for Lincecum. And unlike Matt Stairs, who was 0 for 28 after striking out as a pinch hitter, Sheerholtz has been hot, hitting safely in six of his last nine pinch hit appearances. For the year, he's hitting 419 as a pinch hitter, 13 for 31. Swings on the first one and chops it to Howard. A short trip to the bag for the first out. And this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Pedro Martinez getting congratulations from uh, his manager Charlie Manuel a much slimmer Charlie Manuel we might add Charlie losing 54 pounds in the last few months. Picture of health and as we talked about Bob early in the game the comparisons with Colfax and Pedro and the lack of complete games and here's an example of the specialization of today's game as great as the two starters pitched. It's going to be in the hands of the relievers and see who does the best job there. 
fouled off by Velez, who has a homer and a double in three trips. Ryan Madsen is five and four. His ERA is 3.23. Had him out the front, one and two. Romo continues to throw and now in earnest in the San Francisco bullpen. Madsen with a very good strikeout to walk ratio. 64 K's against 20 base on balls coming in. An inordinate number of strikeouts have had to be officially recorded at first base tonight. Diving breaking balls that the catchers have had difficulty wrapping up. Yeah, and that's a good point because I was thinking about Matson coming in and how many strikeouts the the featured pitch tonight by all three pitchers has been the changeup. And there's another example, and that's why you see a lot of the catchers end up having to throw to first base. Pitch looks like it's going to be about knee high. The bottom falls out of it. Hitters swing at it. Catchers have to scoop it up and throw it. And Taria wearing an 0 for 3 collar and taking a fastball on the corner and at the knees for strike one. That's in such a big part of the Philly bullpen last night. Guys that pitch the eighth inning and don't get a lot of saves are often overlooked. And yet that if is one of the most if not the most important part of your bullpen to get to the closer. Well Brett Myers is due back off the DL any day now. And that will give them additional depth. They talk about the bridge to Lidge. Right. The question is really and I mean no disrespect by this can Lidge be counted on he has blown so many saves this year in contrast to last year when he was literally perfect. Rollins behind the bag close play but he got it. So we go to the bottom of the eighth and the Phillies cling to a 2 1 lead. Reminder MLB tonight after the game all the highlights get you updated Hazel May has an interview with Albert Pujols so we'll look forward to that. Meanwhile Sergio Romo trying to keep things in order and give the Giants a chance to rally in the ninth against either Madsen or more likely Lidge. Giants like Romo coming into the game uh, because of his attitude fearless challenges hitters not an exceptionally hard thrower. We'll get it over 90 once in a while sweeping breaking ball but mostly they like the fact that he'll come in and throw strikes. 5 11 190 his record is four and two but since the all star break his ERA is seven and a half. And he'll face the top of the order. Rollins is one for three had a third inning double Sandoval in close at third. The crowd tonight 45,156 their 59th sellout of the season. Here are the final particulars on the two outstanding starting pitching performances tonight. Pedro seven innings 87 pitches five hits one run didn't walk anybody struck out nine. Lindsay come through 96 pitches in his seven frames of work four hits two runs one walk hit a man and struck out 11. Phillies lead it two to one. Jimmy Rollins, the National League MVP. A couple of years back, hitting 244 this season after a very, very slow start. 
but he has 34 doubles this year. Make it 35 because he had one earlier in this game. He's stolen 25 bases. He's a gold glove shortstop. And he goes down swinging. Good breaking ball from Romo, and again, it's going to fall on the shoulders of uh, Brad Lidge. A lot of speculation the way he scuffled, the way Mattis, Madsen has pitched. Would you leave him in there? But uh, Charlie's going to keep going to his closer. Hope that he uh, regains that form and has some confidence going into postseason play. Talk a little bit about uh, the reasons for some of his problems when he comes in the game. Do up for the Giants in the top of the ninth, the three, four, and five hitters, Sandoval, Molina, and Wynn. And not that the uh, the Giants have a murder's row in the middle of that lineup, but oftentimes when you're scuffling as a closer, you'd like to be able to come in and face the bottom third. But uh, Lidge is going to have to work through the heart of Bruce Bochy's lineup. Well, Lidge has learned through the years over and over again that the crushing home run by Albert Pujols in the 05 playoffs, with all the success of a year ago, with the ups and downs this year, that one of the greatest attributes of a closer is the simple ability to forget. That hits the bat, rolls out toward the mound, and Romo throws Victorino out. He was trying to turn away from it, and it got a piece of the bat, two down in the Philly eighth. Yeah, no one has to go through that any more than the Twins' Joe Nathan, who looked oh. like the Twins were going to sweep the White Sox and get right in the American League Central. And just like that, back-to-back -back home runs with two out in the ninth, and the White Sox came back to, to win it. And that's the kind of thing short relievers have to, to try to forget. Easy to say, tougher to do. Here's Utley. Who scored the go ahead run when he was hit by a pitch from Lincecum with two out in the sixth and then came home on Ryan Howard's double. You look at that grip and you say to yourself is he about to throw a knuckler. But no he hopes the hitters think that <laughs> it's too obvious. It's like hiding under the bed. It's the first place they look. But how about the story on John Smoltz? One of the various items that uh, was discussed this week on MLB tonight. He goes over to the Cardinals and Dave Duncan the esteemed pitching coach informs him you've been tipping your pitches. That's one of the reasons you've been hit so hard. We can work that out. And it looks like they did. Now, although Smoltz was the loser today in a 4-3 defeat at the hand of the hands of the Brewers, he has pitched well. This goes the opposite way, and an interesting route to the ball taken by Velez, but he comes away with the catch. So Utley is retired in a bid for an extra base hit. Kids, this is not exactly a clinic, but the out is recorded. And so it remains a one run game as we head for the ninth and as Lidge heads from the bullpen to the mound. Brad Lidge stretches the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World Champions of Baseball. We didn't know it at the time, but that would be the last memorable call of Harry Callis's storied career as the voice of the Phillies. And that strikeout of Eric Hinsky to conclude the World Series win over Tampa Bay made it 48 for 48 in save opportunities, regular season playoffs, and World Series combined for Brad Lidge. What a difference a year makes. He has blown nine saves, the most in the major leagues this year. Lights out. Not always. At least not an 09. So here's the question. Ryan Madsen came in through nine pitches, 
got three quick outs in a one two three eight. Why not leave well enough alone. Because this is your closer that pitched you to the world championship and you want to try to get him to be a confident pitcher again. It's easy for the fans to look at today's game management managers and coaches look at the big picture and if Brad Lidge is going to be a factor again when the Phillies go to the World Series they have to try to help him get on track. They can't uh, forget about it. And he, it, his problems, Bob, really, in talking to Charlie Manuel are not much different than a hitter. When a hitter goes through a slump, the tendency is to grip the bat too tight. In Brad Lidge's case, as you see from his pitching motion, he doesn't have a lot of wrist action. He's kind of what we call a long armor. Gripping the ball a little tight doesn't have the same movement or velocity. Two and one to Sandoval, who doubled in the first and since then has grounded out twice. Same velocity as he had last year. has been around a while and pitched in a lot of big games so casual fans might be surprised to learn that he's still only 32 years old and apparently healthy so he should have good years left. Part of one of the most dominant bullpens a few years ago when it was uh, Octavio Dotel in the seventh Brad Lidge in the eighth and Billy Wagner in the ninth for the Houston Astros. Gets Sandoval, and again, they have to throw to first to record the out. One gone in the ninth. Now they might be approaching a, a record here for catchers having to uh, throw out strikeout victims. And a good pitch right there by Brad Lidge. Got ahead of, uh, got two strikes to Sandoval, and then down and in, the slider down and in, since so many of the pitches have been that appear to the hitter to be strikes until the last minute. And again, a nice block by the Reeves. Ruiz, boy, has he done a nice job behind the plate as Molina has done for Lincecum. In addition to the nine saves that Lidge has let slip away, his one loss record is 0-6, and, and his ERA is 7.03. Not a lack of velocity. Got that one up there at 95 as the count levels at one and one. Pensive Philadelphia fans. They've seen a number of situations like this turn out not quite the way they would have hoped in 09. After all of them ended happily with Lidge on the mound in 08. His 2-1 to Molina. Misses 3-1. and one. Benji's 0 for 3. Popped up. Let's see if it stays in for Ryan Howard. It will. One out away. Andy Wynn 0 for 3. Strike one. Brad Lidge has some fans in Colorado. If he can seal a deal here, the Rockies retain their one game lead in the wild card chase over the Giants. 
Strike two. Toward the hole and by the diving Utley. And the Giants are alive on a two-out single by win. Got the pitch down and in. Wind just dropped the barrel on it, and you see Utley just out of his reach for a two-out single. That brings up Uribe, who struck out, fly to deep right, and then whistled a double to center. Conversation here might be about holding Randy Wynn. The uh, Giants not known for stealing bases, but uh, with their lack of punch in the lineup, Bruce Bochy might say, uh, got to take a chance and gamble. Usually, Tall pitchers with motions like Brad Lidge don't get to the ball to hold play this quickly and are easier to steal on. Wynn has swiped 11 and he's been caught twice. Blocked by Ruiz. Boy, he is so valuable behind that plate, and unfortunately for catchers, when uh, stolen bases come up they get the uh, percentages most of the time bases are stolen against the pitcher but they get criticized for that and there's no stat to show you how many balls they block and how many bases they prevent runners from advancing win is going taken high the throw from Ruiz and he steals it tying run in scoring position with two out of the ninth and an example right there no chance. Now they'll say, well, they stole second base off Carlos Ruiz. He had no chance. Watch Randy win. He's got four steps before Lynn ever, uh, Lidge ever picks up his leg. One, two, there he comes. And Ruiz with a strong, accurate throw. But uh, Wynn just too quick a jump off Lidge. And Arebe ahead on the count, 2-0. Might have had a pitch he could handle there. Fouled it back. Luke's trying to save it for Pedro. Aribe holds up. They check it first, and that's confirmed. Three and one. Another block by Ruiz, and uh, Uribe holds up just in time. Travis Ishikawa, lefty swinging first baseman next. And that is ball four. And you can see Lidge slip on that pitch with uh, Lincecum and Pedro both planting their foot in about the same place and now Lidge doing the same. You can see his spikes get caught in the front part of the mound. They're going to call Ishikawa back and it looks like Fred Lewis the veteran outfielder is going to come off the bench. So the Phillies hold a team meeting on the mound. It's the kind of situations that have driven Lidge to the ledge throughout this season. Well, one of the things they'll tell all the infielders, you know, on a ground ball, even if you can't feel it, knock it down. Try to knock it down. At least keep the man on second from scoring. Along with a little strategy on how to go at uh, the pinch hitter, Lewis. And I think often I think also all these guys try to rally around Brad Lidge and boost him up as best they can if they're going to do what they did last year 
they need him to regain his form. With two out and nobody on in the top of the ninth, Wynn grounded a single to right, stole second, Aribe walked, and now here's Lewis, who's nine for 26 as a pinch hitter. That's 346. Strike one. Win away from second. He runs well. He's the tying run. The 0 1 to Lewis. 0 and 2. And Lidge is again one strike away. Win goes and uncontested he steals third as Lewis takes outside. No attempt by any by the third baseman Feliz to go to third base. You don't want to vacate your position and allow a ground ball to go into left field become a base hit. So they they gave him that base uncontested. And the one two pitch. Lewis chops one toward the middle. Utley comes up with it and tags Oribe to end it. So Lidge again quickened the pulse of the Philly fans, but eventually he ends it. Well, we got what we uh, came to see. Two great efforts by two great starting pitchers, but again, it comes down to that tense ninth inning to see if uh, the closer can get the job done. What a series this was if you like good pitching. One nothing Phillies behind Hamels. Four nothing Giants behind the newly acquired Brad Penny. And the only game that wasn't a shutout though it was close. Two one fills Martinez over Lincecum. Here are your updated wild card standings. Giants who have a three game series a couple of weeks from now. In San Francisco against the Rockies. Those are the only three games remaining between the two top contenders for the National League Wild Card. Giants now a game behind. Braves and Marlins still in it. Cubs on the fringes. Well, Jim, I'm going to say tonight's Chevy player of the game is Pedro Martinez. What do Jim, you think? <laughs> I don't think I'll argue with that. All right. And you could make uh, Tim Lincecum a strong second. The last out as Utley uh, takes it by himself and tags out the runner to end the ball game. And here's a look at Pedro, who takes his record this year to 3 0, and that's career victory number 213. We mentioned this earlier in the modern history of baseball and that's defined as post 1900 only Whitey Ford who pitched for those great Yankee teams has a higher career winning percentage than Pedro Martinez and not by all that much just a few percentage points. We'll be talking with Jason Worth when we come back to Philly in just a bit. The Phillies win it over the Giants tonight, two to one at Citizens Bank Park. And as promised, we're joined now by Jason Worth, who's down on the field. He had a home run early in the ball game, which tied it up off Tim Lincecum. And Jason, can you hear us? I can hear you. There you go. A three-two pitch. Lincecum and Pedro were both just on top of their games tonight. What did you hit for the home run? Uh, I think it was a hanging curveball or a hanging changeup. Still not sure which which one it was, but. Um... It didn't do a whole lot. It was, it was off speed for sure, and uh, it was up in the zone. I would imagine uh, as we look at that pitch, Jason, that's what it looked like from up here, a high change or a high curve. But yeah. certainly watching uh, both of these guys, they didn't make many mistakes. Had to be fun to play behind and watch, even though it might have been tough as a hitter. Yeah, pretty quick game. Just check the clock, like two hours and ten minutes. So uh, usually we play pretty long games here, so it was nice to uh, watch two guys uh, 
do their thing tonight and um, you know luckily we're on the on the right side of it. You know this is the way Lincecum has been doing things the last couple of years obviously the yeah. reigning Cy Young Award winner uh, came in tonight 13 and 4 but Pedro both Jim and I thought Pedro was a revelation tonight not so much that he pitched effectively but that he was so overpowering and he had such hop on his fastball did it look that way to you from right field he looked like he had command of the game um, you know he gave up a, a first pitch home run to start the game off and then from there he, it, it was it was all him so uh, you know whatever he had working it's, it's sometimes it's tough to tell from right field but uh, it, it was definitely working yeah, you've seen him now I think is his fifth start could you see a noticeable difference tonight as Bob mentioned that he had a little more giddy up on his fastball yeah I mean he's been pitching good since, since we got him um, it's just the difference tonight was just, you know, the pitches that he made and, and uh, the outcome. But uh, you know, he's had a good live fastball as far as the uh, the radar gun's been saying since we since we've had him. So, uh, you know, I, I I've always I've been thinking since we got him that ever seen him pitch the first time that he was capable of, of going out there and pitching like the old Pedro. You guys have tremendous depth now with the addition of Pedro and and Cliff Lee. Tremendous depth in your starting pitching. But there's been concern about Brad Lidge, who was perfect a year ago mm -hmm. and has blown nine saves this year, has a record of 0 and 6. So for him to be able to come in and nail down the save, even though a couple of guys got on base, to nail down the save in a one-run game right. was important tonight. Yeah, for sure. And he, he's been uh, looking a lot better as of late. Um, you know, I think uh, for the pitchers, I think the, uh, the playing as late as we did last year into the World Series and as, as short as the winner was, I think that definitely took a toll um, on those guys. I know Cole had some problems to begin the year off. and. Uh, you know, here we are in September, and, and guys are starting to take form uh, just in time. Maybe you can give us a little insight as a player, because from a fan standpoint, you're saying, well, Lidge is blowing all these saves. Sometimes you say, well, why not leave Madsen in? But I noticed the guys around the infield, and I'm sure in the clubhouse, you have to rally around Brad Lidge mm -hmm. and try to build up his confidence so he can regain his form. Yeah, he's our guy. You know, we're, there's no second guessing and uh, none of that going on. We, we The bullpen set the way it is with Madsen in the eighth and uh, Lidge in the ninth. Um, you know, but really, like the last few times out, he's been, he's been throwing the ball a lot better. He has command of his, uh, his fastball, and he, he's throwing a little bit firmer, too, which I think has been helping. Um, you know, hopefully this is just that time of year to, to get things going and put, put things, uh, you know, put things together down the stretch here. Jason Worth, big home run tonight. Thanks for taking the time to be with us. Thanks, guys. Okay. Jason Worth hit number 30 tonight. It tied the game. Eventually, an RBI double by Ryan Howard brought Chase Utley home with what proved to be the winning run. The Phillies win it 2-1. to one. We'll be back to wrap things up from Philly after this. The kind of game Jim Cott loves tonight in Philadelphia. All about the pitching, all about the pace. Barely more than two hours. The Phillies... Make it two out of three in this series over the Giants, winning two to one. Here's a look at some games upcoming on national television, be it on Fox, MLB, TBS, or ESPN. And then looking ahead to Monday, Jim and I will be at Yankee Stadium. It's the Rays and the Yankees in the second game of a Labor Day day-night doubleheader. Red Sox, White Sox on MLB earlier in the day. Rays and Yankees from the new Yankee Stadium at 7. Eastern and four Pacific MLB tonight is coming up next Greg Amsinger will handle the duties along with Harold Reynolds Barry Larkin and Tony Clark so for Jim Cott for Elliot Kalb in the booth and all the men and women who helped put the telecast together we bid you good night from Philadelphia where the Phils prevail over the Giants two to one. Seven of the last eight hitters he has faced. Here comes a throw.